The Conch Republic is a micronation in the city of Key West on the Florida Keys. It has an estimated population of 68,071 people, according to Wikipedia. Its flag is this flag. It's the nation's motto, we seceded where others failed. Interestingly enough, the flag looks like many state flags because it is a seal on a bedsheet. Not that the flag is bad. The story begins April 18, 1982, when the United States Border Patrol established a roadblock on U.S. Highway 1. The only access point by land was closed, and people leaving the Keys into Florida were treated like foreigners entering the U.S. U.S. Border Patrol claimed the roadblock was to stop illegal immigrants from entering through the Florida Keys. They searched for drugs as well. Severing the Keys only land connection, it caused traffic jams 17 miles long, which led people to cancel reservations. Soon, local hotels and attractions were empty. Key West community leaders went to file an injunction against the roadblock in Miami's federal court. However, the court ruled that the roadblock would continue. As Key West Mayor Dennis Wardlow left the courthouse, he was met by the press. When asked what would happen, he replied, Tomorrow at noon, the Florida Keys will secede from the Union. The next noon, on April 23, 1982, Mayor Wardlow read a proclamation of secession, creating the Conch Republic. The name comes from their local denonym. Mayor Dennis Wardlow became Prime Minister Dennis Wardlow. Now, this is the smartest part of their secession. After the mock secession, war was declared against the U.S. He broke stale bread over a man in a U.S. Navy uniform, then after one minute of grueling war, surrendered and applied for a billion dollars in foreign aid. What a chad. This created publicity for the issues Key West faced with humor. The roadblock and station were soon removed. The whole debacle was a huge win for the fledgling republic as the national media frenzy spurred tourism interest. On the September of 1995, the 478th Civil Affairs Battalion planned an exercise in Key West in which they would land as if it were a foreign island and treat the locals as foreigners. However, they forgot to inform local officials about the plan. Prime Minister Wardlow saw the opportunity for publicity and along with some residents boarded the schooner Western Union and approached a Coast Guard ship sailing in the island's direction. The Western Union began valiantly throwing conch fritters, water balloons, and stale Cuban bread. The Coast Guard ship Diligence returned fire using their fire hoses. This swiftly ended the bloody battle. The Coast Guard complained to the Department of Defense that local officials weren't warned. The next day, the Coast Guard surrendered and jokingly stated, that they never meant to challenge the sovereignty of the nation. Due to a federal budget stalemate in 2005, the Everglades Park and the Dry Tortugas Park were closed. This annoyed locals as they were losing money in prime tourism season. So the Conch Republic organized an invasion of the Dry Tortugas Island. Three antique planes and three seaplanes that normally carried tourists bombed Fort Jefferson with stale Cuban bread. Conch Republic troops were to then deliver $1,600 to run the park for a day. However, it was a bit of a bust since nobody could just accept the money or even open the park. Today, the Conch Republic is a rallying cry for the community, whether it be for protesting the government or raising money in events, Today, the Conch Republic sells passports, license plates, and coins. All residents are both Americans and Conch citizens. Those born there are Conchs, and you become a freshwater Conch after living there for seven years. A mock republic as a tool for community support is a neat idea. It appears to be effective, so maybe other places should try it as well.
Micronations are just truly great. I wonder what the future has in store for this island republic.